A watchdog panel of British lawmakers warned today that the government's latest legislation to revive its controversial plan to send migrants to Rwanda is not compatible with the country's rights obligations. The news agency AFP says the ruling conservatives introduced the so-called Safety of Rwanda bill late last year, shortly after the Supreme Court ruled that deporting asylum seekers to Kigali is not legal under international law. It passed after, on, after ongoing scrutiny in both houses of, of parliament. The legislation would compel UK judges to treat Rwanda as a safe third part, party or country. It would also give government ministers powers to disregard sections of international law. Parliament's Joint Committee on Human Rights said the proposal is not compatible with the European Convention on Human Rights and the 1951 United Nations Refugee Convention as well as domestic rights law. More than 700 Botswana nationals could be kicked out of Ireland after the European country moved to drive down the number of asylum applicants. Ireland's Justice Minister recently indicated Algeria and Botswana will be added to a list of safe countries as part of measures to reduce the number of asylum seekers. From Gobron, Botswana reporter Gondisi Dubey has the details. According to figures from the island's Department of Children, Equality, Disability, Integration and Youth, most of the 26,473 people who are seeking asylum in Ireland are from Africa. That includes 3,000 from Algeria and 709 from Botswana. Last week, the country announced it will add both Algeria and Botswana to a list of countries deemed to be safe. This will mean asylum seekers from these countries will no longer be guaranteed protection in Ireland and could be sent home. Expanding the number of countries deemed safe is seen as a key strategy to cracking down on rising asylum applications. Johanna Tandi Baloy is a Botswana national based in Ireland and says the development is worrisome. Uh, of course, there should be a concern. Obviously, our country has been highlighted now. They realized there is apparently a lot of uh, numbers of Botswana coming into the country. Uh, remember, this happened at the same time when Ukraine is having the problem. So there were a lot of uh, Ukrainians accommodated in the country. The biggest problem was now accommodation, which was so severe, they, the citizens started even complaining and worrying. Under the new arrangement, applications from asylum seekers from safe countries would be fast-tracked. Baloy says this could lead to mass deportations in the near future. Obviously, if your application is not successful, they look into a case, they realize, oh, this is not really something that could one could say it's, it's a threat. So if you are unsuccessful in that, you might need to be deported. Uh, the Irish deportation system has been really slow and it hasn't been really active, not knowing if they are going to make it very effective and kind of reveal it. Of course, it's a burning issue at the moment and people will be concerned. Chanasi Puzo was the chairperson of a 2022 campaign called Justice for Undocumented People Living in Ireland. She says the government is being pressured by public opinion to act on the growing number of asylum seekers. The locals like view us as people that uh, came to, de to depend on wholly on, on the government coffers, on false pretenses. So that's really something. Uh, that they don't really like. And as for now, it's, it's election uh, time in most of these Western countries. And uh, immigration is a uh, the hot uh, issue topic at the moment. Puzo, however, says there is at least one benefit to Botswana being classified as a safe nation. For Botswana to be labeled as um, a safe country is good for the country. Is that won't tarnish uh, the reputation of the country and uh, it won't damage the uh, potential uh, investor confidence as well for the country. But for us, Botswana citizens living here uh, in Ireland, it's, 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 it will affect us in, in, a, in a negative way. In December, the European Union agreed to immigration reforms that will limit the number of asylum seekers. For VOA, this is Mkondisi Dube in Habroni, Botswana. Elements of Rwanda's army supporting M23 rebels in eastern DRC Congo have fired at least one surface-to-air missile, according to an internal UN document seen by the French news agency AFP. The confidential report said a mobile surface-to-air missile, SAM, w was fired at a UN observation drone last Tuesday without hitting it. 
It says French military intelligence supports the assessment that the mobile SAM system was Rwandan. The report indicates two aerial images in which a six-wheeled armored vehicle is visible with a, red eye, with a radar and missile launcher system on its roof. The photos were taken about 70 kilometers or 44 miles north to the city of Goma in Rochuru territory held by M23 rebels after often said to be linked to Rwanda, a charge Kigali denies. In the document, the UN's peacekeeping mission says it has no past reporting of non-armed uh, groups possessing the training, capital or resources to operate and maintain a mobile SAM system. The African Development Bank and the UN Refugee Agency have said they are partnering to support displaced people and their host communities in South Sudan. Since the start of the war in neighboring Sudan last year, over half a million people have arrived in the country where resources are already overstretched. Most of their arrivals are South Sudanese who had been in Sudan for decades. Many are heading back to villages that barely have any services and where there is no humanitarian assistance available. Senior officials from the African Development Bank and the UNHCR, the UN Refugee Agency, paid a joint visit to Gendrasa Refuge Camp in South Sudan's Upper Nile State. Mali Lore Akin Ogdal, the bank's vice president for regional development, integration and business delivery, and Lof Mzol, UN. HCRS Assistant High Commissioner for Operations met with government authorities, refugees, and members of the host community. We have decided to partner with the UN HCR because, as part of the bank strategy for the addressing fragility and helping to bring to build resilience in the countries, one of the tenants is to leave no one behind. We are extremely earned. I think the international community should be very grateful to the government of South Sudan for their open policy in welcoming more refugees who are coming in. The visit comes in the context of strengthened collaboration between humanitarian and development access globally. The two sectors have recognized the need in recent years to work more closely with one member.